This is. This is. It tastes like. This mama. is life. It tastes like mama, eh? I have to say, you made it. Welcome to our casa, and today we're making pasta alla nori. But before we get started, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell for notifications on future videos. Pasta alla nori. Yes, it is similar to pasta alla norma, but the inventor, the beautiful creator of this dish, her name is Nori, who also happens to be my mother-in-law, Francesco's mother, and more importantly, baby Frankie's nonna. Since the weather is getting a little cooler and we're all in the need for some serious comfort, pasta al forno. Baked pasta is the way to go. We're going to be using eggplant, pecorino, frets, mozzarella, some uh, strained tomatoes, and your choice of pasta. What is this called? We're using pasareche pasta today. It's kind of similar to like a strozza prezzi, but uh, you can really use whatever you want. Santonori likes to use uh, pinette. So pretty much just look for something that's a little short pasta. Even a little tube pasta will work just perfectly. Eggplant is the star, so we're gonna get started prepping these guys, and we are going to peel them for this recipe and cube them into little tiny, tiny bites, and then fry, of course. Now, time to cut. To fry our eggplant, we're gonna use a large saute pan and a lot of olive oil. We have a lot of eggplant and we really want to get them nice and coated. It's about a half an inch of oil in your pan. Okay, now we're gonna add some of our eggplant in. Not all of it, just a little bit at a time. After five minutes or when you start to see them really browning up, we're going to take this batch out, let that oil drain off of them. While my batch, second batch of eggplant is frying, I'm going to cut up my fresh mozzarella. We're gonna cut it up into nice little cubes. Get our pecorino grated. Always lower your flame when you're taking your fried eggplant out. Once your oil has cooled down just a little bit, we're gonna add two whole cloves of garlic. We're gonna let that cook in that oil for a little bit. Then we're going to discard some of this oil, but leave some for cooking. And now we're going to discard two thirds of that olive oil. All right, we have our pan back over a medium heat, and now we're going to add our tomato sauce. Now we're gonna add some fresh basil. I'm just gonna rip it by my hands so it's nice and get big bites of basil in that sauce. This is like a perfect, uh, very simple, classic tomato basil sauce that we're preparing for our pasta al forno. We're gonna go pretty heavy on the basil. I have about three sprigs of just the leaves that I'm using. Cold still, it didn't get too hot in that pan yet. Okay, let's give it a stir. And right now you just need to keep stirring that sauce so that oil gets nicely incorporated. Okay, and in our sauce, we're gonna take out those garlic cloves and discard them. We have our pasta water boiling. We're going to salt our water for this recipe. Now we add our pasta and on the package it says 10 minutes, but we're only going to cook it for three. 
because all of it's going to be put into the oven and it's going to get cooked through perfectly. We don't want it to get super mushy. While the pasta continues to cook, we're going to add our fried eggplants into that beautiful tomato basil sauce. Make sure your flame is at a medium. After draining your pasta, we're going to add it straight into that beautiful sauce. With that flame still on, make sure it gets thoroughly mixed. And that pasta is going to be pretty undercooked, pretty hard right now, but it's going to cook a little bit right here and it's going to cook totally to the perfect al dente in the oven. Now, very important step, we're going to take it off the heat. And now we add that beautiful mozzarella that we cubed up. Nice. Give this a little stir in there. Just make sure it gets a little combined. Before we add our grated pecorino romano. And this is where you would normally in an alla norma add your ricotta salata, but since this is pasta alla nori, we are adding pecorino romano and mozzarella combo here. Now we're going to add that beautiful pasta mixture into the cast iron or any pan you can use in your oven. Press it all around, make sure it's evenly spread out. Preheat your oven to set 375. Into the oven it goes. We'll let it cook at 375 for about 15, 20 minutes. Time for some wine. The way we decided to pair with this fantastic dish that comes from home is a red wine and it's called Rosso di Montalcino. There is a little bit of confusion in between different wines that come from different area of uh, the Italian country with very similar names. We get in our restaurant a lot of these questions, so I'm gonna try to clarify the basic differences in between Rosso di Montalcino and we have a Brunello di Montalcino, and then we have a Nobile di Montepulciano, and then we have a Montepulciano. So, Brunello di Montalcino and Rosso di Montalcino are from the same little town in Tuscany called Montalcino. No. Correct. <laughs> but while the Rosso di Montalcino grape are harvested from younger vine, the Brunello di Montalcino has a longer fermentation and aging process. Both of these wines are Sangiovese grapes. Sangiovese Grosso, to be uh, more correct, which is a, just a bigger uh, typology and clone of the Sangiovese. The Nobile di Montepulciano is, again, from Tuscany, from a little town or village very close to Montalcino, but not in the Montalcino area, called Montepulciano. Montepulciano. Therefore, Nobile di Montepulciano. I know. The grape varietal of the Nobile di Montepulciano is again a type of Sangiovese called Prugnolo Gentile. So we're still in Tuscany, we're still in the Sangiovese world, but we have these three different names. Rosso di Montalcino, or sometimes they call it Baby Brunello, younger, fresher, less bodied. Brunello di Montalcino and Nobile di Montepulciano. Then we have a fourth one called Montepulciano, that's it, and the name of the grape is Montepulciano. It's not in Tuscany, he has the same name of this Tuscan village, but is typically from a different region called Abruzzo. It can be from other region in the central south of Italy, but the Montepulciano d'Abruzzo is the classic table wine everybody knows. So these are the main differences, very, very, you know, simplistically put in between these four wines. And today, again, we're drinking uh, Rosso di Montalcino from uh, uh, 2018. Younger, 
the Nebrunello, of course. The Rosso di Montalcino is ready to drink, very young and very fresh. Uh, it's a type of wine that I love, especially when we are out of dinner or in our restaurant, you don't want to spend the big money for a Brunello. The Rosso di Montalcino is a very, very, very good solution. So, I'm very excited to try it. Let's open it. Yes, perfect timing, perfect timing. Congratulations. Thank you, finally. Yeah. It happened after our 60th video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it only took me 60 tries to open a wine bottle on the perfect moment. Wow, that was perfect timing. Woo! Huh? Practice makes perfect. Yeah. A thousand hours, baby. <laughs> Is it ready? Almost, but if you want an extra crispy top like we love, we're going to turn our broiler on just for a few minutes, just so that top can get nice and crispy, just like Santanori makes. Okay. Nooch. Mamma mia. It is. This is spectacular. Spectacular. Pecorino, Pe Pecorino Romana, I wonder why. Ooh. From our little Roman girl. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell for notifications on future videos. And make this pasta. I'm not gonna leave, I have to finish this. Sorry. Then I'll leave this time. Uh -huh.